Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're doing a float trip looking for northern pike and smallmouth bass. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, what a special day. We're up in uh, central Wisconsin, and we're with our buddy Tim Maher, who runs probably the most unique guide service in the state. He finds these rustic, I would say, far out of the way places to take this raft down. And Tim, what, kind, what rivers are available in central Wisconsin for your trips? So I have several that I'll fish at times. It's mainly off of water levels and things like that. You gotta get to watch the water levels because if they're too low, you're not getting up and down them. But it, like the, the uh, Embarrass River, the uh, Little Wolf River, the Wisconsin River, the Rib River, the Wolf River, there's there's endless numbers of rivers. Anything you've caught smallmouth out, out of is a good time to float it. Well, what we're gonna do today is catch both smallmouth and northern pike and tell the folks, I mean, the scenery and the how quiet it is, I mean, this is second to none, right buddy? It's so peaceful. There's nothing like it. I mean, if you thought the O'Connell was peaceful, this is even on another level. Well, you do all the rivers in Wisconsin. You explore everything. But with, talking a little bit about this raft, the way you have this set up, it's very comfortable. I've got a swivel seat. You got a seat. Uh, we got Ryan the photographer in the back. But it is a comfortable adventure, right? Yeah, it's really comfortable. I have a lot of senior citizens that come with me, and I rarely have anybody complain about being uncomfortable. Obviously, people need to stretch once in a while, but it's it's as comfortable as you can fish out of. With how, how, no good is, how good is the fishing? It's amazing. Seriously. We're going to pound some fish today. All right. Hey, that sounds good, buddy. Hey, folks, we'll show what we're using and how we're using it. All of that coming up right after this. Folks, here's your chance to win a 2023 Wolverine X2 XTR from Yamaha. One lucky winner takes home this incredible machine. This side-by-side -side has maximum comfort, power steering, factory installed winch, and a full dump box. Enter today by going to GillespieFishing.com, click on the Wolverine X2 XTR Sweepstakes Spanner. This Sweepstakes is brought to you by your Yamaha dealer and Fleet Farm. Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. You know, they come in and what we do is, we, we, again, we want to hear their story. We want to make sure they're okay. We want to give them guidance. A lot of times we call it quarterbacking their case, right? Help them put themselves in a position where they can get the best medical treatment they're taken care of. What we want to do is make sure that the only thing they have to worry about, John, is getting better, right? And we focus on everything else. Hey, welcome back, folks. As we talked about, we're doing a float trip down the river in central Wisconsin. And uh, surface baits, that's the deal in August like this, Tim? Yeah, I love my surface baits. The weeds are high. There's pockets in here to cast over. It's time to smash some bass. All right, I like a buzz bait. And what is that one called there? Whopper plopper. A whopper plopper. Hey, we're going to have some fun, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, here we go. That was so cool. The, the hit was so neat there. And then you put the anchor down Tim right because you figure there might be more around yeah I'll tell you what in a river this is impressive how these fish battle you man it's unbelievable okay buddy I mean it's really tough you know yeah to get them in you almost got to get them on time and he isn't even that big there you go hold them up for the folks at home there Tim now that was a nice hit and what I did was they weren't hitting the surface baits so show the folks what I use there the old tickle tail now that's a tickle tail and you just kind of reel that straight yeah nice a, and slow a tickle tail paddle tail right 
And you know, what kind of areas do you look for, Tim, on a river like this? So some rivers, you got a lot of rock and stuff. This one, there's not so much rock in it. So whenever you see rocks, that's kind of the area we target, but a lot of undercut banks, any dark holes in the river where you can't see bottom. Ah, uh, the next cast, I got a small one on here. But the reason I want to film this is to talk about, you know, we had a little cold front move through last night, Tim. And, and uh, we got north winds today. And usually, folks, these rivers are tremendous on surface baits. And uh, do you think that a, a, a cold front, Tim, can, can turn that surface bait off a little bit, buddy? Absolutely, it can. So try these steady baits that are just a steady retrieve is probably the key to success today, right? Yes, sir. It seems to be the ticket right now. And it's so funny, folks. We're fishing in what, two, three feet of water? Yep. Yeah. That was a great hit, wasn't it? Yeah, buddy. It's Come it's on. not huge, but it's another beautiful smallmouth. And what, what what are you throwing? The whopper plopper. I wow, oh, that was on the surface bait, huh? Yeah, I downsized a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's with the cold front, folks. That's a really good idea. All righty, buddy. There we go. <laughs> Just a nice river smallmouth right there. I had to hit the same time you did. So these these fish do hunt in packs, huh? Oh yeah, I caught, like two weeks ago, I caught two, two casts. I had two fish on my bait at the same time. Now I should tell folks that, you know, you get into uh, September and October, that's when these river trips are really gorgeous, aren't they, with the leaf change and everything? Absolutely. And so do you stick with smallmouth all the way through fall then? No, actually, John, about mid-September, I'm going to switch over to salmon. We'll be fishing kings and cohos in the rivers on the Lake Michigan tributaries. Oh, my gosh, that's a huge fish, whatever you got on. What do we do? Is he going to get under that tree, Tim? He was under it. Did you, did you get him out? I believe we're good. Oh, my. That was a huge jump, buddy. Yeah, that's... What do you think that is? I think it's a smallie. Do you really? What can I do here to help you, buddy? Um, what can I do? We're going to hand you okay. the net here. All right. And that He's extends? He's coming out away, yeah. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. Did he make a move, huh? Yeah, he clobbered. I mean, he just clobbered that and jumped right away. Ooh, these by the rock. Okay, good job there, buddy. Oh, that was skill getting around that rock there, man. Oh, oh crap. Oops. There we go. There we go, buddy. Ooh. He just fell off. Yeah, here you go. Show them. I'll, I'll show the folks. That is a smallmouth bass. That's that good. is gorgeous. And folks, when that thing hit, it hit through the weeds, didn't it? It made yeah. a big splash, came over the top of that. I mean, that was amazing. Take a look at that fish for a river smallmouth bass fish. What is that, 20, 19? That's 19, 20 inches. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. Now, is that unusual, Tim? No, you usually get a few of these. Look at the gorgeous fish. Look at the pattern, too. Yeah. Now, here we are, you know, in towards later August. Uh, does the smallmouth fishing stay good in September, too? It can. Um, I usually peter out around the 15th is when I start salmon fishing, but I typically I'll run a couple of trips throughout the fall and they usually go pretty good. Do uh, father, son, father, daughters enjoy this? Absolutely. Yeah, this is such a great trip. And again, folks, this raft is totally relaxing. Finally got hit on that wacko worm. And, oh, I got to keep away from that shoreline. Keep him away from that shoreline. He's There's trying to go underneath that. It. Yeah, he's trying to, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. I can't control these There's fish, another you know. One right behind it. Well, I mean, we catch big ones, you know, in the Bay of Green Bay and Chaguamagon Bay, but in this current, it's almost an unbelievable fight, isn't it? It? Yeah, they fight hard, man. I mean, that was cool. And there, he's not that big. Show him to the folks. But this is really interesting, folks. Um, we're fishing along, it looks like a big grass bed, right? Yeah. But underneath it is a bog. And you, and I, that fish, when he hit that wacko worm, tried to go underneath that. Tim, isn't that something? Yeah, they, they run under the banks a lot. Mine went under that tree earlier, too. Ran out a whole bunch of drag. So what you want to do is cast as close to that as you can? Yeah, work the shorelines. If you see there's any kind of depth, two, three foot, and it's undercut, dark, cast at that stuff. That's where the fish are. Uh, another kind of medium-sized smallie, but that wacko worm works. And you were right, Tim, about casting it right up next to that grass. 
And there he goes again, trying to get into that grass. I'll tell you, whoa. I'm, I'm kind of starting to wonder what a 22 incher is going to feel like, you know? That is awesome. There we go, buddy. Oops. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you've done this for years. Tell the folks how that current just is amazing. These fish fight hard Seriously. in this water. Now, oh, did he eat that or what? He took your worm even. Yeah. And you know, that's about an average size smallmouth, but I'll tell you what, if you've not experienced a fight from a smallmouth bass, this is the perfect spot to do it. And there's not a lot of deep water, is there, Tim? No, we got some deep corners coming up and stuff. For the most part, though, you're fishing undercut banks and rocks with undercuts, little dark pockets of mud, different things like that. Pretty much anything that looks different than a sand bottom. I see you got us kind of close to the shore here. <laughs> I better duck, huh? Yeah, you can if you want. No, but I mean, I, I can't get over again how beautiful this stretch of river is. And again, you said there's a, a number of rivers that you guide, huh? Absolutely. There's at least a dozen rivers that all float at times. Do you have a favorite? Um, you know, my home body is pre pretty much my favorite. Okano is probably my Okano favorite. and Peshtigo. Yeah, but there's a lot of really nice water like this too. And what's so nice about having a raft system like this is you haven't even gone to the northern part of the state where you have the Flambeau and the Chippewa and the Brule, right? Yep. Well, you, you and I are going to do that, right? Absolutely. It's coming. Ooh, the wacko worm is getting hot. But I'll tell you, I've got a distinct advantage. This is not a real big fish, folks. Uh, Tim is, uh, is doing a nice job rowing for me. There you go, buddy. That's not what, a bad fish. No. 14 uh, incher? No. But um, one thing you, we should tell the folks, you, this, can, this raft is really easy to control in the river, but you also got an anchor. And what you'll do when you get a fish is anchor and spot cast, huh? Yes, sir. We anchor it up and cast out as much as we can, try and, try and get in on the groups. Usually there's a few fish in each spot. But you're right, those undercut banks by that big grass, that's three bites in a row I've had under there. Yeah, so they just hide under there and ambush when in stuff- In the high sun, I think they slide under there and just wait for stuff to get close to the bank and clobber it. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save $67 on the Food Saver vacuum sealing system on sale for $79.99. They say great minds think alike, which could explain why for over 50 years, more anglers have chosen Humminbird to see the water more clearly. Our tech predicts where the bites are, and our innovations foreshadow the sport's future. We've helped anglers win tournaments and the weekend, taught them to fish smarter, not harder. So if you're not already on board, it's worth asking yourself why, when the people in the know agree that Humminbird is simply clearly better. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here, the Johnson, just spray it right off. And obviously, we got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Eagle Claw, the pick of the week. The balsa style slip float bobber is meant for more sophisticated fishermen. Eagle Claw, the only hook made right here in the USA. So far we've had success where we see rocks. Now is, is, is that usually the deal, Tim, when you see this kind of stuff, these big boulders? Yeah, the rocks, as long as they're in the current. If they're not in the current, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fish around them. But as long as we're in the current and there's some big rocks, there's usually an undercut and they fish hide out in them. Yeah, what happens too, it's like a current break for them. So they sit on the down current side and rest and something goes by, they ambush it, right? Yes, sir. So big rocks are, are a key. Yep, big rocks are our friends. 
<laughs> that is so cool when they hit that surface bait. I'm not even paying attention. I'm looking the other way and all I hear is a big sploosh, you know? Big old crack. And we got a little bit deeper water here too. You can, I got the net for you here, buddy. I'll tell you what, this water is clear too, isn't it? Oh yeah. That's a nice fish there. Ooh, look at, see how clear that water is? He's not hooked good? No. Ooh, and that's a dandy too. Ooh, I don't want to get him tangled up. up. There you go. There we go. Nice job, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, that's Dang. a quality fish there, buddy. Can you come off? And so is is the hooking percentage very good on those topwater baits? You hook them for a while and sometimes they'll pop off. I mean, you, you lose probably probably 20% of your fish. Now, when I, when I talked to you the other day on these float trips, first of all, how long are they? About an eight hour trip. Sometimes they can be a little more, a little less. It depends on how the weather is and how fishing's going. And you know, normally if you if you put all your days together, about how many fish a day do you guys average? I, I'd say at least 15 fish a day. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I mean, on, on a real good day, we might catch 50 fish. Wow. That was cool. We're actually getting to a section here where we got lily pads to do, what do we got here? I think we got Pikey. a smaller pike. Yeah. But that's okay. There we go. Very pretty color in here though, aren't they? Yeah, buddy. And, and you've gotten them up to how big? I got some up to 35 inches. I've seen some bigger than that even. You got he got your worm again. Yeah, he went after that wacko worm there. But you've gotten him up to 36, huh? Yeah. And there there are muskies in here too, Tim? Yeah, there's quite a few of these bodies of waters have, have muskies in them, and there's actually some pretty solid fish. Well, that was fun, buddy. Are we halfway through the trip yet? Uh, probably close to halfway. <laughs> Getting a little bit later in the afternoon now, not a big fish, but one thing I want to talk about now is we got kind of shade along the shorelines. Is that something you look for too later in the day, Tim? Absolutely. Anywhere where they can hide and ambush stuff. Yeah. Well, we've caught a lot of fish today, a lot on the surface bait too. And that one thing that's good about these surface baits is they cover a lot of water, right? Yeah, it's easy to cover water and you really don't have to set the hook on them. I love when they hit that wacky work. I count to like two and set the hook. And this guy's coming at me. I don't know if he's big or small yet, Tim. Okay, oh man, you look at how small that fish is. Show the folks there. I thought I had a whopper on, you know that, Tim? Yeah, he got caught up in some stuff and then they fight hard. You know, we were talking a few minutes ago about, you know, when you get into the afternoon and you have the shady side of the river. Is that, and if you got depth and shade, that's the bonus, huh? Yeah, these undercuts and shade, anywhere, anywhere they can get out of sight. I mean, it's pretty shallow water for the most part, so they like to hide and ambush stuff. Hey folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2023 Fishing Contest. Contest. This week's first winner is Patrick Lazard of Kohler, Wisconsin, caught this 11 and a half inch bluegill on Fond du Lac County Lake using a jig. Emily Karras is of West Bend, Wisconsin, caught this 47 inch northern pike on the Bay of Green Bay using a Rapala. John Bowles of Luck, Wisconsin, caught the 17 inch crappie on Wisconsin Lake using a jig. Jim Miller of Downers Grove, Illinois, caught this 22 inch largemouth bass on Lake Thompson using an Acme Tungsten jig. And this week's first kid winners, Nick Turasek of Bloomingdale, Illinois, caught this 23-inch bass on a pond using a frog. And Hunter Harper of Little Shoot, Wisconsin, caught this 13-inch crappie on a lake using a wax worm. Each week, I shop online at fleetfarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, the Igloo Cool 48-quart cooler is on sale for $24. 99 and the SOG Ninja Tactical Backpack is on sale for $29.99. I'll tell you what folks, I've been a proud user of Amsoil for many years and us sportsmen a lot of times not only have a truck but a boat, an ATV, a snowmobile and how do you figure out which Amsoil product to use in each machine? Yeah that can be a challenge sometimes and you know we make it easy. We've got a lookup guide, you just go to amsoil.com you put in your vehicle, whatever it may be, whether it's a boat, a wheeler, a truck, a trailer, whatever. Um, you pick out your product, it tells you how much and which product to put in. Real simple. And one thing I want to mention too, Amsoil 
does a ton of research before you even put the product on the market. You make sure that it's the best. That's correct. It's years in the making for a product to launch. There's a ton of research and development to make sure that it's going to protect like it's supposed to. And folks, to find the Amsoil you want, go to amsoil.com. What's the difference between a good net and a great net? Simple. It's all in the features. Fortis nets by Clam Outdoors are tough, safe on fish, easy to use, and a telescoping handle. Learn more about Fortis nets at clamoutdoors.com. Welcome to the Johnsonville Marketplace. Hi, Brittany, oh, how hi. are you? This is awesome. They got all the Johnsonville products. Ooh. Let's go take a look. Let's do it. We've got these specialty flavors that are only available for a limited time. And then of course we have all the sausage swag you could want. Come check out the new Johnsonville Marketplace just a few miles off of I-43 in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. Oh, that one just ripped it, didn't he? Right yeah. next to the shore. And is this a decent sized fish? Yeah, this is a big one. This is a big one? Yeah. Oh, be careful because I'll tell you what, like we talked about before, that surface bait you're using usually only gets one hook in them, right? Yeah, that's why you don't set the hook real hard on this bait because you okay. usually pull it out. Ooh, this is a dandy here, buddy. This is a nice fish. Man, he tried to take you around the front. Ooh, he is not hooked very good, is he? No. He is not hooked very good. Get him right into there. There we go. Oops, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. You just can't. You're, yeah. There we go. Boy, oh. is that a beautiful fish. I'm sorry. You it's just can't. Awesome. It's hard to maneuver in this boat, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, Nettingham's a chore in here. Boy, is that a beautiful smallmouth bass right there. Is that the biggest of the day? or? Uh, about... It's got to be close to it. It's a yeah. nice heavy fish, 19, 20 inches. Now, does time of day make a difference? I know you do these trips all day long. I think we're getting into a better time of day. We're sure getting a lot more action all of a sudden. Yeah, and you want to cast right up next to that shore. Do you move that surface bait right away then? Yeah, I usually give it a twitch and then I start my retrieve. And a lot of the time, the first twitch, they crush it. <laughs> Now that is not a big fish, but you can't get over that hit, right? No. Nope. I mean, the hit every time, folks, is so cool. And let's see what we got here. No, not a bad fish. Boy, that has been a hot bait today, you know that? The Whopper Popper is yeah. my favorite. And you're just kind of sticking with that all day. But hey, turn around if you would, Tim. I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the upcoming month. We're in late August now. But uh, as you look ahead to Semder, now you kind of touched on this before. You actually use this raft to salmon fish? Yeah, we float king, king salmon in the raft. We'll set up in the top of a hole and float bobbers and skein down to them, cast some crankbaits and spinners. And I mean, we caught some fish close to 30 pounds out of the raft last year. It's a riot. Now that's cool. So you can anchor and you cast the, the spawn on a bobber down and just kind of watch it? Yep, wait till she disappears and then cross their eyes. Now, can you get numbers in a day? Oh yeah, we had some really good number days last year. It was it was amazing, amazing year for salmon, kings and coos last year. Now the Chinook fishing starts pretty much when? It'll be mid-September, I start running trips and then we have a little bit of a cold front in early September. Sometimes we'll get a little bit of a run, but mainly it's late September into October. Hey, finally got one on that surface bait there. Whoa, that's like hooking a wild cougar, you know? There he is. Yep, it, you just said as we got below that rap and she said, cast right along that shoreline, didn't you, Tim? Yes, I did, I knew and, they'd be there. So on the bottom of the rapids is where they'll congregate because a lot of minnows and stuff will wash down that stuff, huh? Yes, sir. Now that's that's been about the average size today. And, and Tim, how do you, what, what do you figure we caught, 20, 25 fish? Yeah, I would say so. And it's been kind of slower, I mean, at times. We've seen a lot more fish than we caught. 
right in the rapids, huh? Wow, he's jumping too. Wow, that is so cool. We're at, you actually put the anchor right down here in the middle of the rapids, right? Yep. And where are you casting then, into slack? I cast it up into the slack and brought it into the faster water. This one's gonna be a tough one to land. Yeah, it is. He's got, you, oh, you gotta come through that shallow water. Uh-oh. Let me get him one more turn, one more turn. Nice job, buddy. Wow, that's a nice fish to be sitting right there in a foot of water of uh, of rapids, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's get organized, get him off, and show him to the folks. So I don't know if you can tell folks this fast-moving water that we got coming through here, and you just cast at the bottom of that fast-moving water, and you'd one crank, huh? Yeah, it crushed it. That yeah. was awesome. Hey, fun day, buddy, fun day. Awesome day. Quite the aerial show for that one. Okay, folks, we're nearing the end of the day, and I guess that this will be the biggest rapids that we, we've seen today. There's no danger in this, is there, Tim? No, sir, this is easy going. We might get stuck on a rock, but that's about it. Now, most of the rivers that you do fish have scenic rapids like this, and areas, some have areas where you actually gotta get out and push, huh? Yeah, sometimes if the water gets low enough, you have to get out and walk. And some stuff when we do our exploring, you gotta cut logs and... Okay, we're not cutting logs today, but uh, hey, Ryan, the photographer, hold on back there, buddy. Hold on, Ryan. Okay, ooh. Yeah. What do you think this, what is this, like a one? Don't they name rapids? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, here we go. Whoa, yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna score on the last spot of the day here in the rapids too i'm amazed those fish are swimming in there okay here we go there tim Piking. coming in a pike and there you go and what did you just say what that right before that cast i can't believe we haven't caught a pike around here right yeah we got them and we've caught small ones today but uh yeah they're you caught them up to 36 that'd be fun yeah this is definitely not that fun to catch them on a surface bait though that was cool something had a hold of that fish really for more information, give Tim a call. That phone number is 920-604-4169. 604-4169. The main purpose of leader material for muskie and pike is to prevent bite-offs. Seaguar Abrazax fluorocarbon is what I use, generally a 130 pound test. I use it for casting, trolling, and my live bait rigs. It provides invisibility. It's amazingly abrasion resistant, and it's very easy to tie. Even though it's a 130 pound test, very supple, easy to tie knots, absolute best leader material for those fish. For more information, Seaguar.com. You are a spring walleye fisherman. Grab some of these, they're an incredible bait. Kalins, rattling Google eye, hair jigs. Right there, Ryan. Ooh, that one pounded it. Wow, dude, that is my first cast. Beautiful walleye right there on the hair, man. Perky, lively, smacking hair jigs. Doesn't get much better, does it? Big, fat, chunky spring walleyes. Uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know. We're going to fish yet. We'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. <laughs>